20 years of friendship. So we, we had very clear ideas of what each other was going to do. And then with, with Coach McNeely and Coach Devin having been at UNO, they watch us throughout the year and we talk all the time. So even though we hadn't seen each other uh, hardly, we were very familiar with what we were going to do. The biggest thing was that I think each of us probably wanted to come out of it where we competed at a high level and guarded. Uh, they're very talented. They've, I, I think that they've improved a lot of pieces um, with their group, and I think they're going to be able to score a multitude of different ways this year. When you have a guy like Jackson that comes out hitting threes, um, what kind of adjustments do you have to make? I, I, I'm not sure anybody expected this team to take 27 threes today. Yeah. Well, we didn't do a very good job adjusting to it. Whatever we tried, it didn't work very good, obviously. Uh, so, so we got to make better adjustments. Uh, he had a great hand. and they The, the, the great mark uh, for their team was they kept finding him. They kept finding him throughout the day, uh, being able to, to get him the ball when he was ready for it to shoot, and he, then he put it in the hole. He had a great game and a great day. Thank you. All right, next up will be Travis Brown. He's with the Bryan College Station Eagle. Hey, Coach, kind of piggybacking on that. Um, last year, this is an AM team that was dependent upon their post play and getting the ball down low and points in the paint. How surprised or how much were you expecting them to be able to hoist up and make as many shots from the outside as they were able to today? We, we had game plan for them to shoot a bunch of them. We, we got lost on, I don't know, four or five probably rotations where we might have got a little too cute in, in some of our uh, schemes for where we're at uh, in some switching stuff that we uh, normally do, uh, but it's later in the year. And uh, if I could go back and do it over again, I'd probably have them play it straight uh, to where we don't lose some guys because I think you know, that contributed probably to, to five or six of their 12. All right, we have one more question on the queue. If you do have another question, send it to me, but we'll go to Owen Buchanan. What about here. Logan? Logan's in the mobile office. Are you I, okay, Logan? Be careful, man. <laughs> All right, let's go to Owen Buchanan. Uh, yeah, Coach, um, very competitive game up until about the, uh, I guess, about the – the, the timeout at the eight minute mark of the first half. And, for, and, and that's when it kind of changed from your perspective, uh, what changed at that point? We, we had a couple really costly turnovers right there uh, where we stopped really attacking their press. I thought when we could attack their press and get past the first layer of it and be able to pass and then make a second attack, I thought we were very successful uh, there in that run. Uh, we did not do that. We had a couple costly turnovers, which turned into easy uh, finishes for them. Uh, we didn't get to the line nearly like we normally do. Uh, we got there four times a day. For instance, again, at Brigham Young on Thanksgiving night, we got there 32 times. Uh, so normally, uh, we, we'll make more than our opponent's attempt just by uh, schematically the things we do. And part of that goes to uh, hats off to A&M uh, in there to take a bunch of charges and and for some turnovers, but uh, we didn't get to the line nearly enough in that run. And I think that was, you know, a big contributing factor as well. We, we took it in there, didn't get a foul or didn't get a finish. And then it leads to them on an easy run out. Uh, and there were some guys that, that got winded for us that, you know, I either couldn't get them out quick enough or, or uh, we just had a bad rotation, but uh, credit goes to credit goes to buzz in his, in his group. Thank you. Thank you. That's all the questions we have for you. Logan, did you have a question? <laughs> okay. All right, Coach. I appreciate it. Looks like you're all done. Thank you a lot. See you next year. Thanks. Thanks, sir. Yes, sir. All right. We're recording again. Hey, Quinn, we've got some questions for you. Uh, we'll start with uh, Chip Howard from Sports Talk. Hugh, did you come out intentionally aggressive? Was that your mindset from the beginning? Uh, yes, sir. That's my mindset before every game. I feel like if you come out and you're like sadistical and submissive, then um, it probably won't end well. So I try to keep me and my team locked in and keep us all on an aggressive um, according to. So when you hit your first couple of shots, did you feel like it was going to be one of those days? Um, I don't know if it was going to be one of those days, but I kind of just trusted myself and my teammates and the work that I put in over this long summer that we've had. Um, and it paid off. Have you felt like your shooting has, has improved during all the practice? 
Yeah, I feel like that's one of the things that I needed to work on over the summer uh, about my game. I shot like 28% from the three-pointer last year, and that's not that good. So um, I just kind of made it an emphasis to work on that this year so I can come out and be a, um, a greater help to my team. Thank you. All right, next question will be from Travis Brown. But a reminder, if you have a question, shoot me a private message. Thank you. Uh, I know you personally had a, a great night behind the arc. How much with the, the lineup that y'all have, how much do you think y'all's identity this season is going to be uh, shooting from distance and, and how much you feel like y'all have improved in, in shooting from last year? Um, I feel like this year will be a lot better than last year. I feel like we have a lot more shooters that are considered shooters this year. I feel like last year we had a lot more people who could play basketball but weren't really like shooters. So I feel like this year our identity will be a little bit better. It'll force teams to have to play us honestly, which means that guys like me, JJ, and, and Hassan and Dre can get downhill, which will force the defense to help and we can kick out the shooters who, who we know can knock down shots. And uh, I know we've talked, you and, and a lot of people have talked a lot about Hassan uh, leading into the game. How, how do you feel like he fared in his, his debut and, and was able to make an impact of the team? Um, I feel like with, his, with this being his first game, I feel like he did well. Um, he didn't come out too nervous. He came out, he accepted the spotlight. Um, of course, he had some mental mistakes um, defensively, but who doesn't? Um, but overall, I think he did great for his first, uh, for his first rep of Division I basketball. All right, let's go to Owen Buchanan from TexAgs.com and then Chip. Hey, oh, Owen, I, we're not hearing you. Can you start over? Okay. I was going to say, yeah, Q, I was going to ask about the same thing, but he was asking you specifically about Hassan. But just your thoughts on some of the, the new guys that you were playing with for the first time and what impressions they made on you. Um, they all made really great um, impressions on me. They were all receptive during the game to the things that we were telling them. Um, it was a new rep with the huddles, the speed of the game, the defensive coverages, all of that. And this was our first real rep of um, having to play against that. And I think they all handled it extremely well. I couldn't be more proud of them. Thanks. All right, now we'll go to Chip Howard from Sports Talk. Q, I know you guys have focused on this opener Wednesday night. Tarleton State's coming in. I don't know if you know anything about the, the pass with Coach Gillespie coaching here and then bringing Tarleton State in Wednesday. No, I, I don't know anything about that. Okay. Well, he, you need to ask Coach, uh, Coach Buzz about Coach Gillespie coming in Wednesday. Okay, I will. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, let's go to Travis Brown from Bryan College Station Eagle. Yeah, Q, I know last year, y'all, uh, in the first couple of non-conference games, when you're taking just, like y'all say, the first reps as a, as a whole program, uh, there were, there were some, some games that, that, that were, were tight down the end. Was it a nice and a good progression to have a, a non-conference game where um, y'all were able to, to get a, a, a big lead and, and, and not have to worry about it coming down to the wire? Yeah, I feel like last year was a – Last year, if you think about it, it, was the first rep for all of us, uh, the people who are returning and new here. Um, it was all a new system coming into Buzz. Um, I think this year, um, you can see us with a lot more traction um, in the beginning, just because of the simple fact that you have a lot of guys returning that played in the system. So we've been teaching the younger guys and the new guys um, the ways of the system. And, and I feel like we've been gaining, gaining a lot of traction. All right, um, Travis Brown, did you say, I'm sorry, did you ask that question or are we done? I'm good. Okay, that's all the questions you have for you, Quentin. Good job, yes, thank you. Thank you, appreciate y'all. Our next up is gonna be Andre Gordon. If you have a question, uh, shoot me a message or I'll just go down the, the same list of people. Hey Andre, welcome to the to the Zoom. Hey, there we go. Hello, right. hello. Hey Andre, welcome. Thank uh, you. Got some questions for you. We'll start off with Travis Brown from the Bryan College Station Eagle. Hey Andre, how's it going? Good. How are you doing? Doing well. Hey, uh, curious. Um, I, I know last year the offense with with Nebo and what we all were able to do worked a lot through the post. A lot of points in the paint today. A lot of shots from outside. How much is do you feel like this is going to be? 
the identity of the team this year with uh, the outside shooting and, and, and a little more balance between the paint and outside? Uh, I think kids on our team with uh, a lot of returners, we have a lot of reps uh, from last year. So I feel like um, we was in the gym all summer. We had, that's all we had to do was work. So we had a, a lot of time to work on our jump shots. And uh, once we got back here, everyone was really locked in. And uh, we we're just executing our, our plays right and getting downhill and creating for each other. Uh, we got Haas, who's able to get to the paint, just like me, another point guard, uh, to help Q out when he's in the corner or Hayden or Jax or everyone to shoot the ball. So it helps out a lot. You personally, do you feel like your ability to drive the paint and create off the dribble has improved a lot and maybe one of the, the bigger improvements for this season? Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, coming from high school to college, uh, I didn't play in like a, a big state. I didn't play against um, Division One athletes. So uh, last year was a great first rep for me. I was able to play a lot of minutes as a freshman. So it helped me. So this year, um, the sky's the limit. I'm just going to keep playing and being aggressive and get my teammates open. And then all the freshmen that were able to step in today and get, like y'all say, their first rep. How do you feel like they were able to grasp the defensive system? Because I know last year y'all said that that was maybe one of the hardest pieces to, to grasp through the season. Oh, I think the freshmen did great. They came in, uh, did what they had to do. Uh, Hayden, Pop, and Jax, and Haas, uh, they, they did great. Um, we had practice this morning. Um, we got the first rep of that. This is their first Division One basketball game. Uh, they were very excited before the game. Warm-ups was great, so I, I think they did pretty good. All right, next up is Chip Howard from Sports Talk. <clears throat> Andre, how, how different was the feel just starting this game versus a year ago with everybody being new and, and the coaching staff being new? Uh, a lot more comfortable. I was I came out uh, not worried about making mistakes. Like last year, I was kind of hesitant on whether it was shooting the ball or making a, a pass in inside the post or – just making reads. I'm, I'm just a lot more comfortable and got a lot more knowledge. And I think I did a, a little bit better for my first start than last year. So I know it's the first game, but as, as you look at what happened, did you see some things that you expected and maybe a couple of things that were unexpected today from this team after you practiced? Um, I expected us to uh, come out and play hard. That was something that I expected because that's just how we play. That's our that's our game. Come in and play harder than the other team. Uh, I expected um, some of the younger guys and older guys to make mistakes, but to correct from those mistakes and uh, just keep playing through that because that's that's what we do in practice. And we just practice really hard, so that translates to the game. What What would you like to see improved uh, for this second game coming up? Um, no paint touches. We, we emphasize that a lot. So I think that we gave up too many layups in the paint, uh, make teams shoot more threes. So I think that's the biggest part. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, that's all the questions. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We have uh, Mike Lucas from KX. Hey, Andre. Uh, j just curious, you guys put 80 on the scoreboard, but did you guys feel like you played well offensively? Uh, we had a, I think we had 20 turnovers. Didn't know that we had 20 turnovers. Um, I don't think there were forced turnovers either. I think that was all on us. There wasn't like 27 turnovers. I've just heard that, but we had 27 turnovers. They were not forced. Not, not a lot of them were forced. I think probably like 19 or 18 was, uh, not forced. So I, uh, I think that was the, the weak part in our game today, but I think we did play overall pretty good. Um, 80 points is pretty good for the first game. I think we had more than probably four to five people in double digits scoring. Um, I think our rebound effort is going to, it's going to have to be a lot better than it was today in our next, however many games we play. But I think we overall, we play uh, pretty well. So it's cutting down on those turnovers. Is that the, I guess the quickest way to imp improve the offense? A hundred percent. Yeah. We got to get up a shot every time. We got to get the ball in the rim every time. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, that's all the questions on the queue. Um, Olin, did you have a, a question maybe? All good. All right, Andre, thank you. You're good. You're all good. Appreciate, Appreciate you, it. Thank you. Got coach here. Okay. Hey, Buzz, well, welcome to the Zoom. This is cool. How, how do I hit the button where I can see everybody? View. Yeah, it should be gallery. Now hit full screen. Uh, gallery view. There you go. <laughs> How about this, guys? <laughs> Good to see you guys. 
Freaking Lowe's in his car. Yep. He's multitasking. Oh, that, is bad, that is bad Zoom etiquette, pal. <laughs> Being efficient with my time. Okay, I respect that. <laughs> All right, let's get started with Chip Howard from Sports Talk. Coach, we had talked last week about shooting. Um, I'm not sure you expect to shoot 44% from threes every game, but is, is this kind of a preview of how you think you can shoot? Well, um, I know you know this, Chip, and I, I was thinking about your question when uh, – <laughs> When we, when we saw a lot of threes go in, which has been a rarity thus far in our tenure here. Um, we have to continue to work to make sure that the shots that we shoot are the shots that we want to shoot, and that will help the percentage. And we have to continue to make sure that on a daily basis, we're doing more than just shooting during practice. And I think uh, our staff and kids have done a good job of that. Is this, um, what we want, absolutely. Is it going to be something we can do each game? Uh, that's yet to be determined, but it was for sure an encouraging start. The the number of threes, I think you took 27. And Probably again, a little too high. Probably okay. a little too high. Okay. Thank you. All right, let's go on to Owen Buchanan from TexAx.com and then Travis. Game tonight. Are you hearing I didn't me? hear the first start, Owen. Okay, okay. yeah, for, there's a delay for some reason. Okay, now I can hear you. Okay, uh, Quentin Jackson had such a big game. And we all knew he was talented, but it uh, looks like, at least for tonight, that he's taken that a, a, a huge leap. Um, do we look at this as, uh, hey, you had a really good game, or do you think that – should we interpret this as that he's going to maybe this season be the, one of those catalysts or, or leading – top guys that like you had last year of, of a Nebo or some of the other guys you had last year? A, a few things on that. I missed you at the uh, media availability. I was wondering where you were. I mean that in a sincere way, not a sarcastic way. Um, I think Q has been very diligent in how he has handled the last eight months. Uh, when they were away from us, I think since he's been back, he's been very diligent in his time on the floor alone in his individual skill work. I do think that he has to be a catalyst for us. And so much of what I think Q's offense is derived from, number one, is what is his energy level like and his discipline defensively? When he does what he's supposed to do defensively, I think it translates to his offensive game. And then I think, similar to what I just mentioned to Chip, Q knows the shots that he needs to shoot and how we play. And when he doesn't force up shots that we would consider bad, then I think he's going to be even more efficient than he was last year. We're going to need him to be a very efficient and effective player from the perimeter. Uh, when you make four out of five threes, it makes you look better than you probably are. But when you can shoot at that high of a rate, particularly for a guy that gets fouled the way that he does, his free throw rate versus field goal attempt rate uh, will continue to get better if he can shoot it like that from three. And just uh, one last thing from me. Um, you you guys really took command, took control of the game at at about the the eight minutes to go in the in the. When we in the went first small, half. I thought is when when the game began to change. When we went small, I I thought we did really good. I know that's not your question, but that was when I felt like the tide began to turn, is when we had those five perimeter guys on the floor. That's what I was looking for, Coach. Thank you very oh, much. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I thought that group. You know that. Um, Marf had two fouls. Uh, Aku had one, I think, when we went small. And I think when we went small, Olin, uh, it was right before a scheduled media. And I wanted to see, uh, obviously, game number one, how would this grouping work? You know, you can do some of that uh, because Savion is so smart. And so, hey, Save, we're just playing small. You don't have to spend a lot of time on remember to do this, remember to do that. He, he's just instinctual and he's very intelligent. So it, I, I thought H played really good in that stretch. 
And I think the more ball handlers you can have on the floor, the more effective you are in today's game. And so being able to play Hassan and Dre together, I think kind of ensures that the ball's not going to get stuck. So then it becomes, can Savion defend and rebound his position? And I thought what was uh, telling in that stretch, I thought H did a really good job defending and rebounding his position. Thank you. All right, let's go to Travis Brown from the Bryan College Station Eagle, and then Mike Lucas. Hey, Coach, how are you? Hi, Travis. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for telling me happy Thanksgiving on Tuesday. You got it, Coach. Glad it was good. Um, so, uh, curious on um, piggybacking on what everyone else was saying, do, do you, are, are you looking for a little bit more from, from your post moving forward from here and maybe a little bit more uh, points in the paint? That's kind of similar to last year, but, but it was a little bit of a, a different vibe with this team. Absolutely. Uh, I think it'll be a little different vibe, but, but uh, to be realistic, we, we're not going to be able to have the success that we would all like to have when Marfo has two turnovers and two defensive rebounds, and he's the returning leading division one rebounder in the country. And Ku has five rebounds and six points. I thought Ku played better towards the end of the game than he did the first 30 minutes of the game. But the, are, are those two guys combined going to be able to give us 40 minutes at that spot? After today's game, I would say no. Um, but we need them to get a lot closer than what they did today because it's a little unrealistic relative to the competition going forward that we're going to be able to play small for long stretches. I like playing small because I think it sometimes can dictate the matchups that you want. And I think what we do defensively uh, allows the ball to, if you're doing right, to keep it out of the paint. But we're, we're going to need more from Aku and Marfo for sure. Yeah, and then mentioning your defense, um, with, with the guys, the new guys that were able to step in, I know last year that everyone said that was kind of the hardest thing to, to get a grasp mm -hmm. of initially. How do you feel like those new guys did in the system? I was very encouraged. I, I think they've all done well. Uh, I was very encouraged by Hassan and H today. I, I think they're both very intelligent, and I think that they have a high feel for how to play. And the combination of the two – has probably allowed them, Travis, to gain traction in what we're trying to accomplish defensively quicker than most freshmen. Uh, Jax is not behind. Papa is not behind. They're where they should be. But we're, we're going to need those four freshmen combined to be able to help us. And I thought the the uh, what, what Hassan and H did today I thought was really good. And I think that that's an encouraging sign for what we're trying to accomplish defensively. So um, w what we need is more consistency, Travis, on a daily basis of our returning guys being the example that we need them to be for our young guys to follow and what we're trying to do defensively. Because there is some complexity um, within what we do defensively but before you get to the complex portions of it, you've got to be able to execute, do everything you can to keep the ball as far away from the basket as possible. And I think Hassan and H did that today. And then real quick, a status update on E-Man. Yeah, I, I'd, uh, I want to make sure that I handle this right because I know a lot of coaches have gotten in bonds over the last three months. It is not specific to COVID. There are no issues specific to COVID, but he has been having some muscular issues that we've been trying to solve. He could have played today, but I'm trying to make a long-term decision like I would for any kid. We missed him. We do miss him in practice. We obviously missed him in the game. He is making progress. When will he be available? It's I can't answer that yet because we need to see how the next few days go. Appreciate it, Coach. Yes, sir. All right, all right, next up is Mike Lucas from KAGS and then Andrew. Hey, Coach, I know it's just the first game and you haven't had a chance to go back and look at the tape yet, but were you more pleased with the offensive effort or the defensive effort from your guys today? Yeah, good question. Um, what, what I would say that I was displeased with offensively, Mike, is we can't have 19 turnovers. Our turnover rate was too high. 
what I can say is of the field goal attempts that we took, uh, only three are what we would define as bad shots. And uh, it, it was three total, which is really encouraging. So offensively, we need to get, we need to always attempt more shots than the opponent. We didn't do that today. A lot of it was because of the live ball turnovers. And also it was a push on the glass. Defensively, there were stretches where we kept the ball out of what we call the box. So the box is the NBA lane line. And then we play the paint on offense, which is obviously just the college lane line, college lane. We, we want to keep it out of the box a little bit more than we did today. Uh, they're not what I would call a great shooting team. So their, their game is to get it to the box, which was a good rep for us. But we're going to need to do a better job going forward of keeping it out of the box. But I thought we did a good job uh, when we did keep it out of the box of forcing turnovers slash uh, making them shoot shots that they probably typically wouldn't. Thank you. Yes, All sir. Right. Next up is Andrew Hattersley. He's from gigum247.com and then Chip. Andrew, are you there? Yeah, you got to turn, Andrew. I'm not the technology. We can't hear you, pal. This is what normally happens when I'm on a Zoom. If somebody does this, that means unmute. All right, in the meantime, can you hear me? There you go. You? Okay. Um, Coach, seemed like you were able to get a lot of deflections. Was that a product of going small or, um, or did you, did, was there something else going on there? Or was that a product of going small? Yeah, you know, a lot of coaches, I think it probably started when I was a kid with Coach Patino. Uh, they talk a lot about deflections. I think it's become more and more one of the NBA categories that are charted. We, it, it doesn't matter what our personnel is, Andrew, on the floor. We want to be as high on the floor as possible while not getting beat to the paint. And so uh, typically speaking, uh, we call it triangles. If we're in our perfect triangles, we're going to be closer to the ball than we are our man. And that's what's going to lead to a high number of uh, deflections. I think the other thing for us, uh, so much of what we do is positional defense. It doesn't matter uh, what the personnel is. It's all about the position. And I think we had four charges in the first half. I'm not sure how many we had in the second half. And charges are typically a reflection of your position. And I think deflections, coaches would tell you, is, is kind of the same. If you're in the right position, you're probably going to have opportunities for more deflections and charges. All right. Thanks a lot, Coach. Yes, sir. All right. Let's go to Chip Howard from Sports Talk, and then we'll finish with Logan Lee. Uh, Buzz, Coach Gillespie on several occasions has expressed his thankfulness for you being willing to schedule that game. Uh, I think you understand that his team will come in with their hair on fire Wednesday night. I'm wondering what you will say to your team about the importance for them of this game. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of careful, uh, Chip, in how I do that. And I'm not saying this is the right approach. Uh, there was a lot of history behind today's game. Uh, and I never brought it to your attention because I think when coaches talk like that, it makes the game about them. Uh, but you guys know that Jamie McNeely played at New Orleans. You guys know that Devin Johnson was a student assistant at New Orleans. Devin started his 10th year with us today. This was game number one, and this is Jamie's 14th year with us. So there's a lot of history behind today's game. Mark Schlesinger is one of my closest friends in the business. And um, so, uh, what I would say about Tarleton is this. I have never told coach no. I've never told coach no. I never told coach no when I worked for him. I never told coach no when I was building a relationship as a young assistant in the country, following his career and trying to learn from him. And I'm not going to say no to him now. Uh, they will play harder than any team in the country 
just like every team that he's ever coached, whether that's at Ranger or UTEP or Texas Tech or Kentucky, that's who coach is. Uh, they will play incredibly hard and we will, we will see a different team not being disrespectful to coach slash at UNO, but the fabric of how coach leads and teaches is based on being competitive for every dribble and every pass. And so it will be uh, more of a test than we've had in non-conference since we have been here. Thanks. All right, and we will finish up with Logan Lee from TexAgs.com. Coach, uh, good win today, by the way. Uh, Thank you. Your, your guys seem to have more confidence this year. Obviously, the returners understand you and, and your system and what you're asking of them. Uh, they even have more confidence uh, post-game in the presser with their answers and, and uh, being, able to, being able to, to really speak to, to what you're looking for on the court. Um, where is their confidence level in comparison to their actually understanding everything that you want from them and need from them this year? Yeah. Who, who did post game low? I never asked. Q and, and uh, Dre. That's good. Th this is what I would say low on that. They know what our expectation is but their grade on a daily basis thus far has been a B minus in regards to executing daily what they know we have to do. And what we need to do is try to get that B minus to an A minus so that the kids that haven't been here are able to gain some momentum and traction in figuring out what we're trying to accomplish quicker. Cause we're going to need some of those new kids to have a distinct role. And it's not because the intent of their heart is wrong. It's because what we're asking them to do is hard. And you know this, and we all know this and what we do, being your best every day, every possession, that is the discipline required to be great. And we, whether that's Dre, whether that's Q, Save, any of them, we need to be better at our discipline. And that's kind of what we've talked about the last three days. Can we be great at what we know we have to do? And then can we do it again and again? And I think that's where we're going to have to have more translation. They know they do it more often than they did last year, partly because they know. But now we need to get to the point and gain some um, – some consistency in we can do it every day. Dre has come a long way. Q has come a long way, but it's not those two. It's all of them. And them being uh, better speakers, speaking more articulate, having better body language, all of that is just as translatable as what I'm talking about tactically. So I hope that uh, what we're requiring of the people in our program, players or not, on a daily basis, translates to their life. Uh, we just need more consistency, and that's the next step that we've got to take. Thank you. All right, that's all the questions we have for you, Coach. Um, thank thank you. you guys very much. I appreciate it. Good to see you, Olin. You only show up on game day, Olin. I like it. Olin, we can't hear, man. <laughs> Zoom. We uh, Good to see you guys. Freaking, thank you, freaking coach. Mike and Lower in their car. You guys have a good day. All right. Bye. Thanks, Thanks, coach. Thanks, coach.